And then on, after I start the cameras and the master switch, I have to grab down under the seat with the belt webbing, where the belt webbing is to hold myself down and at the same time think, whatever you do, don't let go of this and grab down on the seat. I mean, I have to hold that back. But I think there'd be so much G-force on me that when I go up, I'm not going to have any choice. I mean, I am going to be back. And I think that'll, that'll work all right. Uh, if I don't black out, boy, when he tells me to blow that chute system open, I'm going to get it open. That baby's going to come down okay. I wasn't concerned about that. I was concerned that if you started to red out or gray out or black out... I might let go of it. You might have trouble holding on to not know what you were doing with it. Well, I, I probably would, but... Uh, I'm not planning on doing that. I want to stay awake. It's getting closer, only a few minutes away from the moment of ignition. On a steam rocket, all you do is pull the plug to release the high pressure and high temperature steam, and away she goes, as we'll see in a little while. Expresses the philosophy of the man you see, the man Evil Knievel. The poem is called Why. You could call it his philosophy. It seems that everywhere in this world I go, no matter who or what I know. The people, they look, and most of them stare, and I wonder if they really care. You see this cane with its golden crown? Some of them smile, but most of them frown. I hear them laugh, and I see them cry. No matter what, they all ask, why? Why? Well, I'm just like you, and you, and you, and your wife. We all have a special purpose in life. And my way of life, I'm glad that I found, for like you, I too make the world go round. We're all alike. Oh, yes, we are. We all have a dream on some faraway star. For me, when it's over and done, at the end of a day, my men go to relax, but I go to pray. For I know that tomorrow, in some other place, I'll have that jump again to face. Each time I was hurt, they all said, that guy is lucky that he's not dead. And they were right. But I wanted to get up try it again. I kept telling myself that I knew I could win. So I'd close my eyes and to the Lord I would pray. Oh, help me, God. Let me walk someday. And he did. Every stitch on every scar has just brought me closer to my dream afar. To be a man and to do my best to stand alone is my only quest. Success is a term that has broad use. For you and I to have none in life, there's no excuse. For you to do what I do is not right. But for me, it's not wrong. What I've been trying to tell you all along is that it's got to be. So, if you wonder why, the answer to that is that just like you, I've got to be me. Start the movie cameras. Start his stopwatch on his knee. And they get the final count from Ron Chase. We're still, I understand, two minutes in holding. Stretch is with Chase now. And counting now. We're now counting. The clock has started. One minute, 49 seconds. We're approaching the great moment now. The go-ahead has been given by Ron Chase and Bob Truax. And there is just one and a half minutes to go to Evil Knievel's date. Approximately with one. Destiny. At about 1.15, he'll, Evil will arm the master arm switch. Jim, that master arm switch should be being armed right now. That's right, Len. It's all set to go. All I have to do is now press the trigger on the right hand control handle. 
There is now just one minute to go. One minute and counting. Stopwatch will go on at 10 seconds. Camera's on at 5. I think evil after, and after all to be silent and wish him well in the last 30 seconds. And so we will all stop talking now for this last 30 seconds to count down. Happy landing, evil. Stay with the bird, stay with the bird. It looks like you're going to go into the canyon. You had a premature shoot. You have a good shoot on you. Stay with the vehicle, stay with the vehicle. Put your visor up as you can. You cannot see it now. We, there she goes, beneath the rim of the canyon. It's going to crash, obviously, into the, the river. The is okay, though. She's coming down about 17 feet per second. Slowly going down. It just cleared, just cleared, cleared, cleared the, rocks, the rocks, thank God. It looks like he is in the water. Robert Craig Knievel appears to have landed in the Snake River. What does it look like, Bob? It looks like he didn't hold on to the handle. Like we feared. Yeah. Where does it look like he's down in the water? No, I'm afraid he's down in the rocks on this side, but I can't see. In the water, Bob. In the water. In the water. water. In the water. Okay. Okay. Sorry, just up to the frogman now. Oh. Yes! Robert Craig Knievel did not clear the 1,600-foot Snake River Canyon. He has landed in the Snake River. However, we believe it is in the river and not on the rock. And as you saw on the takeoff, uh, after she cleared the launch area, there was a definite roll to the right. She rolled to the right. And the chute opened prematurely, too, did it not? That's right. The drug chute came out, and then the main chute came out. And, uh, and uh, the uh, came down prematurely. Jim, it appeared to me as if he made no attempt to try to get out of the vehicle. Wasn't it because he was not up high enough? Well, there'd be no attempt to try to get out of the vehicle that time, Len. It's best to stay in it and let the main chute to recover you, which he did do. The family, and we're racing around to them now, is hysterical and in shock, crying. They think evil may be dead or maybe drowning in the river. Let's go over to Bud Perillo, who's got a view of what's happening. Yes, what happened was this. Evil definitely tried to get out, but he couldn't. And it appeared that he hit the side of the canyon. Now, he did not go into the river. It looked like the nose did hit on the side. I can't see the, the craft or evil at all from where I am. But he did try to get out. He was trying desperately to get out of the sky cycle. Of course, the speculation at this point is to try to imagine what possibly went wrong. Well, it appeared that the chute opened too fast. Is there anyone getting close, Bud, to bring us more news of how... David, I can't see anything. The helix, nobody has gone into the water. As I say, there are two men rowing up to the site. Well, that river, again, will repeat, is about 15 to 18 feet deep. David, I am very scared. The nose of the craft appeared to, to hit on the side of the canyon. Let's quickly see again what happened. Here it is, the rocket ready to go off the pad in a burst of white hot steam. And there's the chute much too soon. What went wrong? No one is sure. Evil Knievel is standing in the boat and waving. He is alive and well. Good shape. I think at this point we can all say thank God. Yeah, we'll show you on the monitor. Uh -huh. Where's Rodney now? 
Come on, get the kids. We'll go in the ABC truck. Come on. Where's Kelly? Jack. <laughs> hey, Goody, it's okay. Hey, Goody. Hey, Goody. Hey, Goody. Come on. Follow that, Linda. We're with you. Well, maybe he didn't clear the canyon, and maybe his dream did not come true. But at least he's alive and well, and he tried. I would imagine right now Mrs. Knievel is as limp as a ray. Imagine. We understand she is in the mobile unit beneath our announce stand here in the tower, and she is very, very happy very happy one. That wasn't the way the coverage had been planned. As a matter of fact, there were three helicopters in the air, each with a camera to try to see things unforeseen like that that might occur. However, at the instant that he started heading down the canyon, the Federal Aviation Administration, and we certainly think properly, ordered all aircraft to land immediately. And so there was no camera that could see that spot. But he wasn't in the river. He was on this ledge. Now let's resume the coverage as it happened last night. Less than 20 minutes after blasting off, Evil Knievel is back at his launch pad now in a cloud of dust. Premature parachute deployment, he couldn't hold the chute, but he landed safely in the water. He's walking on his own. Looks like he has a bloody nose and he's bleeding the eyes a little bit. How do you feel, Tiger? I love Evil. Oh, I don't know, Julie. How rough was the landing? Through shelves and bounced down, but I was strapped in so tight that it uh, came through it all right. I, uh, I don't know what happened. It, uh, you lost the spring? I, it you went, couldn't hold the spring? It, it went sideways. It turned. Now, I don't know what happened down here, but Ron and Bob both told me if I saw the canyon wall and not the sky, for Christ's sake, to let it go. And when it turned, I let her fly. I didn't know what had happened. It just about knocks you out, Jules, when it takes How, did you how hit the... were you rescued, though? How were you rescued, Eva? Thank well, God you they were. They came and got me out down there in the trees and uh, put me in the boat. I couldn't get my safety belt. Unharnessed? Unharnessed. If I'd have gone in the river, I'd have never got out of it, ever. Where did you land? Right on the shore? Well, I hit... No, I landed into the wall on this side and then bounced down. Well, no but... I don't know what happened. It's just that I think... Evil. I don't know. I just can't say. I'll have to let Bob and the fellas examine it. Are you going to try it again? Well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, uh, I sat in it and gave it my best. And I don't know what to tell you. Believe me. I just like to see Bob and Ron. Everybody off, please. Everybody else is right now. Okay, everybody else. Okay, everybody else. Okay, You held on perfect. You up on the ramp. You did it. You did it. You told me if it got upside down and I saw the canyon wall the blow the chute, and I did it. I don't know why. No, it, it blew on the ramp. It Just like the last time. Right the the take it easy with him. What happened? It blew on the ramp. It blew on the ramp. Stop it. Yeah, it hurt his head. What happened to it? It, it let go just like the other one, but apparently to a, a completely different cause. It was my leg on top of it, my hand back. You didn't let go of it right here until I saw the thing. And, and then you let go of it. Then you let go. And I pushed it. I can't understand what made it turn upside down. Oh, well, it was, roll. Roll. It was, it was roll. kind of a slow roll. Big wind. But it was, you didn't do a damn thing wrong. The can is still on the, uh, on the thing. It is. It blew off right there on the lawn. Blew off by accident. Yeah. It was our fault. Yeah. That's oh, yeah, it's not your fault. It's the yes, it is. Yes, it is. We should have run one more test. All right. Uh, let's let's try to get. Is the helmet on? uncomfortable? Let's get it off. All right. Frost. And there, you heard it from Bob Truax, Evil did not deploy the parachute himself. It came off on the pad, a mechanical failure. Didn't you know it, though? David, yes. Easy, 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 fellow. You got that. There's Evil, about to be embraced by his father, Robert Neville Sr. We'll try to talk to Bob Truax himself in a minute. Bob, what happened? Well, this right here 
is the cover to the parachute canister. It obviously came loose much too soon, right on the pad, because it was impaled on this part, which goes up the rocket nozzle. So it, it must have detached immediately, either because of a pressure differential between the forward and after side of it, created by the rocket jet, or because the weight of the, the parachute and the G's, the inertia of it, yeah. caused it to pull the, uh, the lid off the can. This cover wasn't supposed to come off until he was at apogee at 2,500 feet when he released the parachute, right? That's right. And so the rocket went up, the engine thrusting madly, and the parachute dragging behind and trying to slow it down. It trailed right out. Yes, what it deployed what immediately. Saying, what you're saying is that the force of the G's that lift off and the suction created by the engine slipstream probably pulled this off. That's our best guess at this time. And so the emotional traumatic Sunday at the Snake River Canyon had reached its end, not the way evil had hoped, nor the way some people had feared. Through the wind and the dust, he descended to where his wife Linda was waiting for him. In the background, the cheers continued from the more than 33,000 by official count that paid to see the attempt and obviously were still behind him. All of this last Sunday. Now we sit in the studios of KCPX Channel 4 in Salt Lake City, our ABC affiliate here. And this is Evil Knievel today as we sit with ABC News science editor Jules Bergman. Jules and I are going to talk with Evil. First question I have, looking at the scratches which seem to be pretty much healed, is how do you feel today physically and emotionally? I feel uh, great. I uh, think that maybe by being in the business that I'm in, I'm able to appreciate life a little more than the average guy does who gets up every morning and takes it for granted. And uh, after that jump was over, uh, the next morning when I woke up, uh, the blue sky in Montana and uh, the Rocky Mountains looked especially good to me. I bet they did. How did you feel physically and emotionally when you got into the vehicle? Well, I think Jules can tell you he was there with me. I was up for the launch as I was supposed to be. Uh, Mr. Truax told me on the phone last night that he knew I'd had a lot of faith in him because we'd have have had quite a discussion since this was over. He said, you went through the countdown like a pro and you did not miss firing the rocket by one one hundredth of a second. You know, Jim, I all my life have not drank any kind of booze or alcohol to any extent and I have never taken a narcotic and I think that that is probably what has helped me recuperate and survive a lot of the accidents I've been in when they said that I'd never get up and continue and uh, I felt great on on the launch pad and I felt great when the countdown went on and I was ready for whatever was laying on the other side or I hate to say it but in the bottom of the canyon. It sure turned out to be whatever. Jules and Evil, we're going to come back in one minute. We, got, we have these replays, as you know, that have never been seen by anybody before in the theaters or anywhere else. We're going to analyze them with Evil, so stand by. Jules, I think you had a question just before we went away. Right. Yeah. Evil, here we are a few moments before launch. The knot in your stomach was just about to go away, that knot you'd awakened with every morning you mentioned to me. What was the actual punch, the thrust of the rocket like as you started up the ramp? When I hit the fire button. I had one hand wrapped down around behind me on the webbing underneath my seat and uh, I had my knee over the firing gun and my arm that held the parachute. I had that blocked off. And When I punched that fire button and that thing hit, it, I saw the flag coming right at me, the American flag, and it went underneath me and all I saw was blue sky, but then I lost all perspective. I may have blacked out, I don't know, but I did come to with that jolt and it was like brakes being put on and I was upside down and I saw the canyon underneath me and uh, I looked at the stopwatch they had strapped to my leg and I saw that there was only nine or ten seconds gone by. Would you like to see it now uh, as I'd other love people to. saw it? Yes, I have never seen it. I would the way like you yourself have it. never seen it, right. Yeah. Well, we have several angles here and uh, first is this one. This is a slow motion shot, slow I guess, motion. of the yep. takeoff. Look at that chute come out behind that thing. And you can there. see clearly the chute did come out on the pad, Evil, long before you could have released well, Jules, it. Jules, I never fired it. I'll tell you that. I never had a chance. There's no doubt about that in anyone's mind who was there and saw the parachute can cover afterward. Here she is starting to roll over on her side. One complete roll to the right and then the main chute pulled out by the drogue chute. Uh, 
is deployed and you're heading down. What this, did it feel like at this moment? Well, I, right then I knew, I, I could see I was over the side of the canyon and then the river coming back in at me and uh, Ron Chase uh, was on the microphone telling me, take your uh, visor and raise it. And I tried, but there was such a tight squeeze in that cockpit that I could only rip the visor off, which I did. I ripped it away uh, with my hands and then tried to get to my safety belt to find out where it was so that if I went in the river, which I thought I was going... Yeah, what did you think your chances I were right here out. of living? Did Jim, I want to tell you something. I could not get to the safety belt. In other words, yeah, I couldn't wall. find it. How big a jolt was that impact? Well, I hit a glancing blow there and I, I dropped down another 65 or 67 feet, so I... I'm very thankful that parachute didn't collapse when it hit there because, you see, I, I hit that rock wall and then dropped down. I was seven and a half feet from the water when they finally got to me. So uh, with the seat belt not opening to get me out of the thing, I would have gone to the bottom of that river. And uh, it took us six months to find the first sky cycle. I don't know how soon they'd have found me, but if I couldn't have got out of it. Now, me, here's another fantastic view from behind as you shoot off the pad. There. I see the vehicle is rolling in mm -hmm. the air. You see it rolling immediately, yes. and you see the shoot out immediately. You see that darn uh, pilot chute came loose also. You see that? And the, the shrouds are twisting. Here's yeah. where people like myself thought they could see you struggling to get the visor up and I down was. the cockpit. I, I was tearing it. You can see I'm trying to get my arms above, uh, out of the cockpit, and I was getting the visor away from my eyes. Are you glad you didn't get out? Oh, yes. You better be. Well, if I'd, have, uh, if I'd have loosened the safety belt then and hit the, uh, the rocks, Evo, I'd have really got a jolt. Evo, now we're going to have a really tight look at the launch. Uh, there you go. In slow motion, there's the parachute canister already out. It blew the can right off the back. Instantly, wasn't it? Yeah. See, it started to turn when I got over upside down, and I could see the canyon below me. And here's where I felt the brakes. I didn't know what had happened. I, I just couldn't figure out what the hell had happened because my knee and my hand were frozen on the, on the uh, ejection system. I just didn't know uh, if I'd blacked out or if Watch I was closely, going into the canyon. You can see your what. arms there the way you were trying to get out right there. I wasn't trying to get out. I was trying just to trying to rip my visor off and trying to get my, my uh, safety strap in hand so that if I went into the water, I could have a chance to get out of the thing. But, uh, so you had no time planned to jump out of it? We thought we were going to go across. Bob Truax came to me and said, Evil, if you want to call this thing off, you don't owe me a dime. And we all looked at each other and smiled and Ron and Bill Sproul and Facundo Campoy, they all said, Evil, you're going to make it. And I got in it with that thought in mind. That's all there is to Why it. Why didn't you want to use the personnel chute? Well, we just felt that I would ride it all the way in. I didn't want to parachute out of it. I said I'd try and ride it across and nosedive it in, and that's what I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, if there's any uh, seed of equivalent benefit in this uh, adversity, uh, I can only tell you that it's still my being alive and I under all circumstances regardless of what happened do not feel that we failed and I do not feel ashamed in any way to have been defeated by a canyon as beautiful and as mighty as the Snake River Canyon that's all there is to it well here it is from one of our helicopter cameras it sure is beautiful and there is there is a launch now from the helicopter there camera it boy it's on its way across to you that. can see the chute slowing you down you can see the headwind carrying you back in now the wind had gotten very gusty I just uh, the last words I said to Bob when he left the the uh, blast off pad I said Bob what is the wind he said 12 miles an hour gusting to 15 and 18 I said do we have a chance he said yes if it will go all the way you're going to make it and, do you uh, feel that you went actually across the camera uh, canyon before you started to drift back oh yes Yes, I mean, at 18 miles an hour, it blew me back in, and how many seconds you can figure out how much ground I here's, covered. Here's your impact. impact. you got to remember, Jim, that parachute all the way open acts like a huge sail on a sailboat. It carries the vehicle right back. Yeah. We had now a great recovery how... team uh, in the bottom. Uh, my own pilot, Mr. McCullum, and all the fellows that were on recovered the thing. Look at this shot now. It's from the other side, looking back, from another yes. helicopter. And again, you see it start down and then backwards. What a strange feeling it was when that parachute opened. I was trying, when I got upside down, I was trying to work those little flippers to turn the thing, and when I pressed on one, I thought, 
boy, somebody put the brakes on. I thought, what the heck? They didn't tell me there was brakes on this thing because I had never known that the parachute systems came out. I Are didn't you know getting a, a kind of emotional reaction watching this again for the first time? Oh. Does it look better or worse? Or I've what? lived with this thing for so long that, uh, you know, I look at it and, and uh, obviously I was disappointed and not knowing what happened, I thought uh, I'm going to be blamed for Here's a premature parachute uh, ejection, which I did not make, and uh, there were a lot of things going through my mind. Now there's the impact on the side of the canyon. You're sliding down toward that rock shelf at the edge of the river. That's where they ended up finding me. <laughs> okay, well, there's a few separate views of what happened at the Snake River Canyon last Sunday. In another minute, we'd like to ask you some personal questions about okay. Evil Can Evil the Man, how you feel, and so forth. I'll be right. right back. Would you do it again? I uh, am a motorcycle jumper, not a sky cycle jumper. I had to earn the money to build the sky cycles to jump the canyon. And uh, I said I'd do it or try it once. I never said I'd try it twice. And uh, I see no point in it. I don't feel that the canyon defeated us. And uh, I think I'll withdraw for a while, but uh, maybe you have not heard the last of Evil Knievel. Eva, let me ask you this. It seems to me that consciously or unconsciously, you are a great mass psychologist. In other words, in this day and age, when we send men to the moon, they get out, they walk around, they come back, they hit a pinpoint in the Pacific Ocean. What made you know somewhere inside that people would get very interested and excited about one man going across a 1,500-foot canyon? Well, I really didn't know that. I wanted to do it because I felt that it could be done. Uh, I really didn't realize when I first said I'd do it that there was so much complex problems to the situation. I feel that uh, it was a thing that arrived at the right time in this day and age and I know by the thousands and thousands of telegrams that I've received in the last two or three days and the two or three negative ones what the feeling of America and the pulse of the nation is and I really didn't figure it to be that big or that much for me but uh, I'm very thankful that it is. Evil, all those newspaper stories, and there have been many wild ones, that said you've made $6 million, $9 million, $13 million. How much did you make? Well, I really, we don't know the exact figure. All I can tell you is that uh, I have 60% of the gross coming on the total thing, including 100% uh, on the live gate, and uh, we did about a million closed-circuit TV, so uh, you're talking about uh, 10 million, 12 million uh, gross, my guarantee, of course, was six, and then what will be made beyond that, I don't know, uh, but I'll guarantee you one thing. You have to want to jump a canyon for nothing before you will before ever get in it, it yeah. and do it One's life anything. Is, one's life is not worth just six million dollars or whatever. I, I don't think so. Evil, don't get mad at me, but even after seeing what we've seen here, you know as well as I, there are still going to be people who say it was a ripoff. Yeah. That you plan to do it this way. Well, there what, are some what people. What do you Jim, say to those people? There are some people, some newsmen included, who you could not please unless you hit the canyon wall head on at 400 miles an hour. So then there would have been a rip off. My body would have been ripped off. So they can call it what they want to call it. But when I take all of the things that have been sent to me, all the articles that have been printed, and uh, the credibility of a great network like yours and weigh it against some of the things that maybe weren't so complimentary, uh, I don't even think or ever want to remember the uncomplimentary things. I really don't care. Evil, you wanted to say something about Bob Truax's role. There was absolutely no Truax failure of any kind. There was an unforeseen mechanical failure and... Uh, Bob Truax, like me, uh, I'm sure is proud of the job that he did, and I uh, have nothing but faith in that man and a real deep heartfelt thanks for his whole crew because when Campoy and Sproul and Chase patted me on the arm and said, we'll see you when you get back here, partner, I'll tell you, I knew they meant it, and all of us went together in that thing, Truax included. There was no Truax failure. Evil Knievel has asked us for just a couple of minutes when we come back from this next commercial to look at you and say something that he wants very much to say when it's all done.
be right back. I'd just like to make a statement to the maybe young daredevils in this country. Remember that being a daredevil sometimes puts me in a position that I don't like to be put in. When I give my word about taking a risk, it could mean forfeiting all fame and fortune as well as my life. I say don't do it. If you like to race motorcycles or automobiles or jump, do it with years of practice and the best equipment and all of the best engineering and know-how you can gather. Be a pro. Practice. Don't be a show-off. Become an artist. And always remember, it's not how loud you can sing, how fast you can drive or ride, or how far you can jump. It's how you go about it. In life, no matter what you do to become a success or a superstar in this world of big business and entertainment, you need a perfect wheel to spin straight forward in the right direction to keep you on top. Your hub must be true, your spokes must be true, and the spin of the wheel must be perfect and correct to keep you moving. Without all of these things I have mentioned, your wheel will start to wobble or flip-flop, and to reach your goal or destination is impossible. Only the luckiest people in life when they get into that kind of a situation, survive a crisis such as I did, and I thank God that I'm still alive. You young daredevils of the future, remember, success is achieved by those who try and keep trying. And when you have nothing to lose and everything to gain, if you're successful, by all means try. But I say to you finally, if you want to compete or become a risk taker like me, think carefully, be a professional, and remember, to gain the world and lose your life is not worth taking any kind of a risk. Jules, do you have a final word on what you saw last yes, Sunday? Yes, Jim, there's one thing I'd like to say. I was there and it was not a ripoff, it was not a hoax. I examined the wreckage myself. Uh, evil, evil and Truex, nobody could have staged that uh, event the way it happened. It was, it was a mechanical failure. People can say a lot of things about evil, but one thing they can't say is that it was staged and that he doesn't have guts. Thanks very much, Thank Joel. You, That's the way it was at the Snake River Canyon last Sunday. Like so many things in life, it was neither total triumph nor total failure. It was somewhere in between. <laughs>